Recently, I was shocked to learn that there had been a significant fire at Evertrust Company, where my husband, Richard, works. At that moment, I felt as if I had been struck on the head. Overwhelmed with concern, I immediately called Richard, fervently hoping he was safe. The phone rang, and when I finally heard his voice answering, my relief was immense. Excitedly, I asked, Richard, where are you? Are you safe? My voice was louder than I intended due to my anxiety and relief. However, Richard seemed annoyed by my loud tone and curtly responded, What's the matter with you? You're talking so loud. I'm at work. Don't call me while I'm working, before abruptly hanging up. Although he didn't seem to be involved in the fire, his reaction was oddly dismissive. My name is Sarah. I'm 35 years old, and nursing is a significant part of my life. I got married to Richard four years ago when I was 30, just as I was nearing the end of my 20s. We met through a mutual acquaintance and quickly connected, leading to a blissful marriage, and we've been living in company housing provided by his employer. Four years into our marriage, we haven't had children yet, but I'm hopeful about building a happy family with Richard. While he can be self-centered, he's generally a kind and loving man who makes me feel secure. However, lately he seems overly preoccupied with work, often bringing tasks home even on his days off, which leaves him visibly exhausted. Richard's detachment extends to our evenings together. After dinner, he often sits on the sofa, ostensibly watching TV, but he's mostly engrossed in his phone using the television merely as background noise. When I attempt to engage him in conversation, his responses are minimal, usually just a yeah or an oh, making me wonder if I've done something to upset him. This recent shift in his behavior is puzzling and somewhat concerning to me. Choosing to believe that Richard was just overwhelmed by his demanding job, I decided to do my part in making things a bit easier for him. If he was indeed that exhausted, I figured I could at least ensure he had a warm lunch and a hearty dinner waiting for him every day. I made sure each meal was nutritious and balanced to help him through his long days. Then, an unexpected change threw a wrench in our routine. The day before, a colleague called, asking if I could swap my night shift for a day shift. This sudden change meant I'd be home in the evenings, so I planned to inform Richard. However, amid the hustle of the new shift, I only managed to email him about the switch on the day itself. I told him not to worry about dinner as I'd prepare it once I was home. But strangely, I didn't receive any response from him. I thought he must have been swamped at work, so I focused on my duties. Even after my shift ended, there was still no word from him. This was unusual because Richard typically replied promptly to my messages during his breaks often using emojis to keep the tone light. But this time, he only read my message and didn't reply. I wondered if he was just buried under work, or if this was a sign of something more concerning, a shift that sometimes happens after years of marriage. Feeling a bit down, I stopped at the supermarket on my way home. Despite the cold weather, I was determined to make a warm, one-pot meal for us. I picked up all the necessary ingredients and prepared them, ready to start cooking as soon as Richard walked through the door. However, he didn't come home at his usual time of 6 p.m. The hours ticked by, and it was already 9 p.m. by the time he arrived. As he entered, I greeted him, trying to keep the mood light. Welcome back, you're home late. Did you have to do some overtime work? My voice carried a mix of relief and concern hoping for a simple explanation. Yeah, but did you have to suddenly switch to the day shift? Richard asked as he entered the kitchen. Uh, yes, a co-worker had an emergency, and I was a bit late in telling you about the change, I explained, feeling the tension between us. I see, I guess you couldn't help it, Richard replied, his voice tinged with frustration. But it's a bit annoying that you only told me today, I might have made plans to go out for a drink or something. You're right, I'm sorry, I responded, turning on the stove to heat the pot. Oh, you haven't eaten yet? Richard noticed the setup. No, I thought I'd wait for you, I said, hoping he'd appreciate the gesture. Well, thanks, but next time you don't have to wait for me, he said. His words stung a bit. I had hoped for a cozy evening together. 
I sighed quietly as I waited for the hot pot to boil. Once it started to simmer, I served Richard's portion and then mine. I was famished after waiting all evening for him. The hot pot was delicious, and I began to enjoy it, savoring each bite. Then I noticed that Richard wasn't eating much. "'What's wrong you don't seem to be eating much?' I remarked. "'Oh, yes,' he muttered, seeming distracted. Then he admitted I worked late, and a junior colleague bought me a rice bowl at work, so I'm not hungry. "'Um, okay, but you should have told me that before,' I said, feeling a mix of disappointment and frustration. "'I mean, you could have sent a quick message before I started cooking. I think Richard realized I was upset because he quickly suggested, "'Okay, then put all my portions in the fridge. I'll eat it tomorrow morning.' He tried to lighten the mood, but the atmosphere was already strained. After a few minutes of silence, Richard got up from the couch and suddenly announced, I'm going for a walk. That was unusual. His abrupt decision to leave the house after such an interaction left me pondering what was going on with him lately. When I expressed my concern about his sudden desire for a walk, Richard explained, I haven't been getting enough exercise lately, and with all the late work hours, I just need a change of pace. He began preparing to head out, and I was left feeling a bit hollow, sitting alone at the dining table with the hot pot in front of me. Eventually, I decided to put my portion in the fridge, feeling slightly overfed and realizing that Richard and I hadn't spent much quality time together lately. I suggested joining him for a walk, hoping it might give us a chance to reconnect. However, Richard declined my offer, saying, it's not good for you to move around right after eating. Besides, I need to take a long walk alone tonight. With that, he left the house by himself. His behavior struck me as odd. So driven by a gut feeling, I discreetly followed him from a distance. Despite the cool evening air, Richard walked with an unusual pep in his step. He eventually stopped near a park, quite a distance from our home. There, he seemed to be waiting for someone, frequently checking his phone. A few minutes later, a car pulled up. Richard walked over and began chatting casually with the driver. Curiosity got the better of me, and I moved closer to get a better look. Through the car window, I could see a woman with long curly hair and shiny lipstick, laughing joyfully as Richard climbed into the passenger seat. The sight was a punch to the gut. I couldn't help but think he was having an affair. Just as I was processing the scene, the car drove off with them. I stood there, stunned, trying to make sense of what I had just witnessed. Not long after, Richard texted me, claiming he had unexpectedly run into an acquaintance and would be home late. His explanation felt far too convenient, and deep down, I knew something wasn't right. The trust I had in him was shaken as I struggled to grasp the reality of the situation. He had told me he wasn't hungry because he had already eaten, yet it was past 3 a.m. when my husband finally came home. He didn't even realize I was awake as he stumbled in, seeming tipsy, and headed straight to the kitchen for a glass of water. Since that night, he often stayed late at work, especially when I was on the day shift. Synchronizing our days off had always been a challenge, but now it felt nearly impossible. Recently, he was not only working late, but also on his supposed days off. I couldn't shake the suspicion that he might be meeting the woman I had seen with him that night. Driven by doubt, I went online to look for detective agencies. After some searching, I submitted an investigation request to the most reputable one I could find. I felt guilty for going behind his back, but I reasoned that if the investigation cleared him, I could fully trust him again. Waiting for the results of the investigation was excruciating. My husband was as reserved as ever, and every time I looked at him, the image of that woman haunted me. I was desperate for clarity. Then, an unexpected event happened. It was a busy Saturday at the hospital where I worked the day shift. My husband was supposedly working on his day off. As I focused on my tasks, trying not to dwell on my personal issues, the distant sound of fire truck sirens caught my attention. The noise grew louder and more urgent, and soon it wasn't just one fire truck but several speeding by. 
A sense of unease crept over me, turning into worry as two of my colleagues returned to the ward with grave expressions. They were discussing the emergency, a large fire nearby. You mean the fire? I asked, trying to catch up with their conversation. Yes, that's right, they confirmed. It was a major fire at Evertrust Company. At that moment, the shock hit me like a physical blow. Evertrust Company was where my husband worked. The distress of the situation overwhelmed me as I considered the danger he might be in. Learning that the fire was at Evertrust Company where my husband worked filled me with an immediate sense of dread. I quickly explained the situation to my colleagues and rushed to call Richard, hoping against hope that he was safe. Despite the recent tension between us, I never failed to see him off each morning as he left for work. With a heavy heart, I dialed his number, praying fervently that he had not been caught in the blaze. The phone rang, and soon, Richard's voice came through, a sound that momentarily lifted my spirits. "'Hello, Richard, are you safe?' I asked, my voice louder than intended in my relief, but instead of reassurance, his response was curt and irritated. What's the matter with you? You're talking so loud. I'm at work. Don't call me while I'm working. And then the call was abruptly ended. Confusion and anger started to set in. There was a massive fire with fire trucks dispatched to the scene. It was impossible for him to be working normally under those circumstances. His cold demeanor and strange response made me wonder if he had even gone to work or if something else was going on. As my worry for his safety turned into suspicion about his fidelity, I couldn't help but think about all the mornings I had seen him off. Was he using that time to meet someone else? By the time I reached home, my mind was made up. I needed to leave and start afresh. As I began packing my belongings, I checked the mailbox and found that the results from the detective agency had arrived. It seemed timely to take these with me as I left the house that no longer felt like a home. My parents came over to help me pack and I arranged for a moving contractor to expedite the process. Amid the packing, it dawned on me that Richard was probably unaware that I knew the truth about his affairs, and it was likely he was with his lover at that very moment. I packed up my furniture and the appliances that had been with me since my single days. The room quickly emptied, becoming a shell of the home it once was. As I stood there looking around at the nearly empty space, I realized how much I had changed and how much I needed to move on from this chapter of my life. I had grown completely detached from the life I once had in that house. With resolve, I moved my belongings to my parents' house and began searching for a new place to live on my own. The next day, my husband finally reached out, his voice filled with confusion and annoyance. Hey, what's going on? Most of your stuff is gone. I've moved out, I replied calmly. What the hell were you thinking? When are you coming back? What about my food? What about the house chores? His questions were all too telling, focusing solely on what I did for him. Hearing his words, I was stunned but not entirely surprised. Is that all you think about when it comes to me? I asked, the disappointment heavy in my voice. Our conversation brought back the memory of the fire at his company, a day he was supposedly caught up at the office, yet he seemed too carefree considering the circumstances. Why don't you find another woman to handle all that? I challenged, unable to keep my composure. What are you talking about? He replied, genuinely confused. You were with a woman named Kelly today, weren't you? Huh? What are you talking about? I was working at the office. Oh, at the office? How long did you work today? I pressed, my suspicion growing. It was a busy day. Even though I was supposed to be off, I worked until late in the evening, he claimed. That's why I was so surprised that you moved out, he added, trying to sound bewildered by my actions. Why don't you stop lying already? I countered sharply. You lied about going to work, right? I wasn't lying. I was working. What's going on? His voice wavered between frustration and confusion. How can you work until the evening when there was a fire at your office during the day? When I called you, several fire trucks had been dispatched to your company. They were there to put out a fire that broke out at your office. That's why I called you. I wanted to know if you were okay. You told me not to call you when you're at work. 
acting as if there was no fire. His silence following my words spoke volumes, confirming my doubts as the reality of the situation sunk in deeper. The conversation laid bare the fissures in our relationship, making the distance between us more palpable than ever. After uncovering the truth about the affair through a detective agency, I held irrefutable evidence that left no room for my husband to deny his actions. I informed him sternly, There's no way for you to get away with this. From now on, you'll need to communicate through my lawyer. As expected, he pleaded for forgiveness, repeatedly apologizing for his betrayal. However, my feelings for him had long since faded. I'm sorry, but there's no way to fix this. I'm hanging up now, I said, cutting off any further attempts for reconciliation. I promptly met with my lawyer, demanding a divorce and alimony. The proceedings moved swiftly. With the solid evidence at hand, the divorce was finalized, and he, along with his accomplice from work, a junior colleague, was ordered to pay a significant amount in alimony. The affair had not only personal repercussions, but professional ones as well. Once the news of their relationship spread throughout the company, particularly under the dramatic circumstances of the fire at the workplace, it sparked widespread disdain among their peers. Both my husband and his affair partner found themselves receiving cold stares and harsh judgments from colleagues, a social penalty for their actions which seemed to deeply embarrass them. Meanwhile, I moved into a new apartment and began embracing my independence. The stability of my nursing career gave me the comfort to take things slowly without rushing into another relationship. I was enjoying my newfound solitude, appreciating the peace that came with it. Finding out about my husband's affair, especially during the chaos of the fire at his company, felt like a harsh twist of fate. Yet, in a way, it expedited the inevitable. His actions deserved the consequences they brought. Now, as I settled into my single life, I looked forward to the possibility of meeting someone genuine in the future, but with no hurry, enjoying each moment of my life as it came.